Welcome to the MOOC's course Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Chemicals from Aromatic Compounds Part 3. In this particular lecture, we will be discussing production of uh, styrene, phthalic anhydride and malic anhydride. These compounds, production of these compounds we are going to discuss and then source of raw materials for the production of these compounds are nothing but the aromatics. Let us say styrene, you can produce by uh, ethyl benzene, but ethyl benzene you can produce by using you know benzene and ethylene. Thalic anhydride you can produce by using you know naphthalene or uh, arthazylene, likewise malic anhydride you can produce using you know uh, benzene or butene. Okay? Before going into the details of uh, production of these chemicals, we have a recapitulation of what we have discussed in last couple of lectures of this particular chapter. We started discussion on uh, main aromatics which can be used as raw materials for uh, synthesis of different types of chemicals which include uh, benzene, toluene, xylene and then naphthalene. Then we also try to find out the sources for such uh, aromatic raw materials. So, then we found that coal and oil are the better resources to produce such aromatics which can further be converted into different types of chemicals. Then we discussed production of uh, these aromatics from coal and oil. Then we discussed uh, different types of uh, intermediates and end chemicals that can be produced from the uh, aromatics a list of uh, such chemicals we have uh, discussed. Then uh, we discussed properties and uh, end uses of uh, these aromatics followed by the benzene production by hydrodealkylation process. Then phenol production by 6 different uh, processes as listed here we have discussed. We have discussed uh, phenol production by all of these methods. Okay? Now in this lecture we discussed production of styrene. Styrene can be produced from the ethyl benzene actually, but uh, ethyl benzene may not be available pl plentiful. So, what is the process is that you take uh, benzene and then ethylene as uh, raw materials and then in the first step of the process you produce ethyl benzene and then you do the dehydrogenation of that ethyl benzene to get the styrene. So, that is the process actually. So, the styrene production from benzene raw material is a two step process. Okay? First we see the uh, pertinent properties of styrene, molecular weight is 104.1, melting point is minus 30.6 degree centigrade, boiling point is 145.2 degree centigrade, density at 20 degree centigrade is 0 0.903 gram per cc. Explosive limits, uh, lower and upper limits are 1.1 uh, and then 6.1 volume percentage in air respectively. Toxicity limit is 400 uh, ppm, grades are technical grade with 99 percent purity. Then methods of production, two methods are there, dehydrogenation of ethylene and then hydrogenation of dehydration of acetophenone. However, we discuss this particular method in detail, first we produce the ethyl benzene in the first step and then in the second step we do the dehydrogenation of ethyl benzene to get the styrene. Manufacturing of styrene by dehydrogenation of ethyl benzene. Chemical reactions, first production of ethyl benzene is the reaction that is alkylation of benzene. How it is done? It is by the reaction between benzene and ethylene in the presence of a aluminum chloride catalyst and then ethyl chloride as well because this ethyl chloride supplies the hydrogen and then chlorine uh, free radicals. So, this uh, will enhance the catalytic activity of aluminum chloride. So, this aluminum chloride is also added up with this ethyl chloride. When this uh, alkylation of this benzene with ethylene takes place, then you get the ethyl benzene component. This reaction is also known as the Friedel-Craft reaction. This ethyl benzene will further undergo dehydrogenation of ethyl benzene in the presence of tin oxide or iron oxide at 815 degree centigrade to produce styrene which is an endothermic reaction. Right? Quantitative requirements, if you want to produce 1 ton of styrene with 86 percent yield, 
benzene 0 0.87 tons required, ethylene 0 0.32 tons required, aluminum chloride 10 to 11 kgs. Plant capacity 30 to 400 tons per day. Process description, it is a two step operation if benzene and ethylene are abundantly available, so which is very common in India. Thus, we may discuss it as manufacturing of ethyl benzene and its subsequent dehydrogenation to produce styrene. Benzene is alkylated with ethylene by Friedel-Craft method using aluminum chloride or other acid type catalyst. Resulting ethyl benzene is dehydrogenated in steam or excess benzene in the presence of a catalyst to yield styrene. Okay, this is the overall process you know, in, uh, in a summary. In a nutshell, this is what the process, but however, we see the entire process through flowchart with proper description. Okay? So, what we have? We have in general wet benzene, but for this process, we need completely dry benzene. Otherwise, what happened? Whatever this aluminum chloride catalyst is there, its catalytic activity would be lost if the wetness is there in the raw materials. For that purpose, the benzene has to be dried and then for drying the benzene, we have the azeotropic distillation column. When you take the wet benzene and do the azeotropic distillation, in the top you get a water rich phase that you condense to separate out the water and then whatever the wet benzene little bit is there that you recycle back to the distillation column. Whereas from the bottom of the azeotropic distillation column you get the dry benzene. This dry benzene along with the ethylene and then uh, ethyl chloride and then catalyst aluminum uh, chloride is sent to the alkylator which is operating approximately at 95 degree centigrade and then atmospheric pressure. So, here alkylation reaction takes place and then you get a ethyl benzene primarily. Uh, theoretically that is the reaction, but however, there would be unreacted uh, it, uh, components like uh, benzene and then polyalkyl benzenes and other complicated uh, uh, alkylate, alkylates may also be forming. Right. So, for that purpose uh, what you have to do? You have to take the product from the alkylator to a cooler to cool it to the 40 degree centigrade where you can separate out the aluminum chloride complex and then uh, recycle back it to the alkylator. Whereas, the higher molecular weight polyalkylates whatever are there, they are taken to the high temperature dealkylator where this polyalkylates whatever are there, something like polyethyl benzene etc., they would be uh, undergoing uh, dealkylation reaction to produce uh, ethylene uh, benzene and then ethyl benzene etc. Those things are uh, fed back to the system, whereas the components which cannot be further uh, uh, you know undergo dealkylation reaction or uh, reduction they would be taken as a residue. Whereas, the ethyl benzene crude with ethyl benzene whatever is there that is in acidic in nature. Uh, from the cooler you take it and then mix it with 50 percent uh, NaOH to uh, neutralize it. That neutralized mixture you can take it to a settling tank where you can separate out the caustic as a waste. You can recover this caustic and reuse otherwise you can uh, take off uh, right off as a waste. Right? Whereas, the crude uh, ethyl benzene uh, and then product mixture is there that you take to a stripper. This stripper would be separating the uh, product mixture into two uh, streams. One is rich in polyalkyl benzene, another one is rich in you know ethyl benzene and then uh, benzene uh, impurities. Right? So, this polyalkyl uh, benzene should be taken to the polyalkyl stills. The stills almost like you know distillation columns wherever it is not mentioned explicitly they are distillation columns. So, here these polyalkyl uh, benzenes undergo some kind of a fractionation to recover you know unreacted benzene or uh, ethyl benzene etc. They would be sent back to the alkylator through a preheater. Right, whereas, the heavier polyalkyl benzenes which are not being uh, fractionated uh, here at the they will be collected as the bottom of this still and then sent back to the dealkylator. Whereas, the top stream from the stripper which is uh, rich in ethyl benzene and then uh, with uh, benzene impurities that would be taken to a benzene column where whatever the benzene impurities are there they would be separated as top product and then sent back to the uh, azeotropic dryer for the drying of the benzene and then for reusing of uh, dry benzene into the alkylation reactor. 
right? Whereas the bottom of this uh, benzene column would be giving primarily ethyl benzene with some impurities if at all uh, like you know uh, some fraction of benzene etc would be there. So, those uh, benzene and then other impurities are separated out from the bottom and then fed back to the alkylator through preheater. Okay? So, whereas the top product or top stream from the ethyl benzene column would be nothing but a, a pure ethyl benzene that would be stabilized by using or neutralized by using 20 percent NaOH and then pass it through a uh, flaked caustic uh, bed so that to dry it and then you get a dry ethyl benzene as a product. So, this is first step where we have got the dry ethyl benzene as product. Now, this dry ethyl benzene uh, would be used as a intermediate to get the styrene as per the subsequent part of the uh, flow chart that is this part. Okay? So, this ethyl benzene would be passed through a uh, preheater then vaporized and then mixed with the steam and then mixture of steam and then uh, vaporized ethyl benzene would be taken to catalytic dehydrogenation unit which would be operating at approximately 800 to 815 degree centigrade roughly and then product mixture whatever is there that is uh, passed through a uh, preheater again because this reactor product stream whatever is there that would also be at high temperature like 800 degree centigrade something like that. So, that heat would be passed through incoming the uh, reactants. Incoming reactants are nothing but the ethyl benzene and then steam. So, they need to be preheated. They need to be preheated up to the temperature of 500 degree centigrade. So, whatever the temperature carried by the product mixture that would be transferred to the reactants in the preheater. So, that the reactants would be preheated and then that preheated reactants would be sent, back, sent to the uh, catalytic dehydrogenation unit. These preheaters are important from the uh, energy economy point of view. Right? So, once the temperature of the product mixture is reduced to certain low temperature after passing through, pre, uh, through feed preheater that is sent to the steam quench tower to reduce its temperature further and then mixture is sent to a condenser to separate out the vent gases like CO2 etc. And then water is separated out from the condenser as the bottom. After separating the water, the product mixture is primarily having the styrene along with benzene and toluene and then uh, unreacted ethyl benzene impurities etc. So, that product mixture what you do? You first take it to a benzene column, then you take it through uh, ethyl benzene column and then fin final finishing column. All of them are working under vacuum. That means vacuum distillation is taking place or vacuum fractionation is taking place in these three columns. That is why it is because if you are doing the fractionation at high temperature, there is a possibility of a uh, polymerization of benzene, toluene and then styrene also. So, which is not uh, uh, good from the product point of view. So, first uh, this mixture is taken to a benzene column which is operating under uh, approximately 160 mm of uh, 160 mm absolute pressure uh, vacuum and then a reboiler is operating at 90 degree centigrade. So, here from the top of the column you get the benzene and then uh, toluene uh, for a recovery whereas from the bottom of the column you will be getting a uh, product stream which is primarily having styrene along with the unreacted ethyl benzene. So, that mixture is taken to the ethyl benzene column which is also operating under vacuum but at approximately you know uh, 60, uh, 35 to 60 mm absolute pressure and then boiler operating at 90 degrees centigrade. From this ethyl benzene column from the top you recover the unreacted ethyl benzene and then feed it back to the uh, catalytic dehydrogenation unit by passing through a preheater. Right? Whereas, from the bottom of ethyl benzene primarily you get uh, pure styrene and then the styrene is taken to the finishing column to further purify purify uh, by removing if at all some tar kind of materials are formed. These tar kind of materials are collected from the bottom of this finishing column and taken to the tar storage. Actually to this uh, product mixture that is you know coming out after the catalytic dehydration unit which has been quenched and uh, you know temperature reduced to this one you usually add sulphur in order to make the styrene stabilized. 
because you want styrene monomer, you do not want it to be polymerized. For that purpose, if you add sulfur, the styrene would be stabilized. So, such kind of you know, uh, uh, you know, sulfur also be removed along with the tar uh, from the bottom of the finishing column, whereas from the top of the column you get a pure styrene which you can refrigerate it to the 10 degree centigrade or less and then store it as it is or directly you take it to the polymerization unit for the required polymerization to, to be done. Okay? So, this is the styrene production via dry ethyl benzene uh, intermediate. So, this uh, ethyl benzene you are getting from the benzene and ethylene. So, basic raw material here is benzene which is aromatic. Now, we see process description for the first step that is ethyl benzene production. Process for production of ethyl benzene is same as that of cumin manufacturing process which we have already discussed in the previous chapter. In other words, ethylene alkylation of benzene in vapor phase over a catalyst produces ethyl benzene. Separation of ethyl benzene from xylene fractions in petroleum reformate is difficult because of uh, ethyl benzene has only 2.1 degree centigrade lower boiling point than para xylene. Actually, this ethyl benzene also you get in uh, you know petroleum reformates when you try to get the xylene fractions etc. But you know this uh, para xylene whatever is there that uh, having only 2.1 degree centigrade higher boiling point than the ethyl benzene. So, separation of ethyl benzene for, uh, from the para xylene is not possible. Uh, because of that reasons, you know, we choose the uh, alkylation of benzene process to get the ethyl benzene and then dehydrogenation of uh, that ethyl benzene uh, we do to get the styrene. However, in order to get the separation, if at all you wanted to get the ethyl benzene from the petroleum reformate, in general what people do, they use a very uh, tall columns in series to get such kind of separation. Recovery of this high purity ethyl benzene overhead fraction avoids alkylation procedures, but obviously such high towers you need to have. However, bulk of plants use alkylation of benzene process because ethylene and benzene are more plentiful than the ethyl benzene coming out from the petroleum reformate. Okay? So, alkylation operation must be done under very dry conditions with high purity feedstock to avoid activity loss of catalyst aluminum chloride catalyst we are using. Thus, all benzene feed must be dried by azeotropic distillation. Ethyl chloride is added to the ethylene which is fed continuously along with benzene to the alkylation tower operating at 95 degree centigrade and 1 atmospheric pressure. Ethyl chloride serves as a source of hydrogen and chlorine free radicals for catalyst promotion. Granular aluminum chloride catalyst is fed continuously at the top of the reactor. The mole ratio of the reactant is 0.6 moles of ethylene per mole of benzene and no ethylene is recovered in this process. Almost all ethylene is being consumed to get the ethyl benzene. However, there would be some unreacted benzene. Alkylation tower is water cooled to control the exothermic reaction. Alkylated products are pumped to a cooler at 40 degree centigrade where the aluminum chloride complex is separated and a split stream is fed to the alkylator. Bleed of fractionator is pumped to high temperature dealkylator to break down polyethyl benzenes to benzene and ethyl benzene which are returned back to the system that is to the alkylator. Tar residues plus aluminum chloride is water extracted to recover 80 to 85 percent of aluminum chloride. Crude acidic ethyl benzene from coolers is neutralized with a 50 percent NaOH solution because this ethyl benzene is acidic in nature. Then stripped to remove polyethyl benzenes and the overhead sent to the benzene column which separates wet benzene from the ethyl benzene. Final distillation followed uh, by 20 percent caustic wash then drying by percolation in flake caustic bed produces 99 percent pure ethyl benzene for dehydrogenation step in yields averaging 95 percent. Polyalkyl benzenes must be removed as bottoms in the atmospheric stripper to avoid formation of polyfunctional during dehydrogenation step. Stripper bottoms fraction is distilled at a 50 mm pressure with overhead combined with bottoms from ethyl benzene column as discussed in the flowchart. 
then return to the alkylation unit for dealkylation of these higher molecular weight compounds. Higher molecular weight polybenzenes or polyethyl benzenes as bottoms from vacuum steel can be split in the high temperature dealkylators. So, that is the purification step of uh, ethyl benzene. Once you have the pure ethyl benzene, you can do the uh, dehydrogenation of ethyl benzene to get the uh, styrene, that is the second step. Dehydrogenation of uh, ethyl benzene is the step to produce the styrene. Steam is injected with hydrocarbon in a mole ratio of 15 moles of uh, steam per 1 mole of ethyl benzene. Mixed feed passes through the preheater to achieve an input temperature of 500 degrees centigrade to the reactor which operates at 800 degrees centigrade. So, reactor operates at 800 degrees centigrade trying to achieve such high temperature within the reactor by fuels or electric furnace etc. may not be uh, give may not give the uh, you know energy or heat economies for that purpose the feed is preheated to 500 degrees centigrade then send it to the reactor so that the reactor duty would be less. Dehydrogenation catalyst is promoted zinc, chromium, iron or magnesium oxide on activated carbon, alumina or bauxite. Conversion is 35 to 40 percent with an average yield of 91 percent. Reaction product is cooled in the feed preheater then by steam quenching. A water cooled condenser and a separator operation yields crude styrene, ethyl benzene mixture with impurities of uh, toluene, benzene and tar in minor quantities. Sulfur stabilizer is added at this point and the hydrocarbon mixture is passed through a series of vacuum distillation columns. This is to allow separation of impurities at low enough temperatures to avoid styrene polymerization. If you apply high temperature, uh, styrene polymerization may take place. That is the reason low temperature vacuum distillation columns are used for the purification of styrene. Benzene and toluene are removed at uh, 160 mm and a reboiler temperature of 90 degree centigrade. Temperatures higher than this cause auto polymerization of benzene which is also not good. Second column operating at 35 mm and 90 degree centigrade reboiler temperature separates styrene from ethyl benzene, unreacted ethyl benzene. Styrene stabilized at this point with uh, para tertiary catechol is vacuum distilled again to remove traces of tar and sulfur. Final overhead having 99.8 percent or higher purity styrene is refrigerated at 10 degree centigrade or low temperature than that and either stored in insulated tanks or used immediately for polymerization as per the requirement. All this we have already discussed in the flowchart as well. Now coming to the major engineering problems in the production of styrene by dehydrogenation of ethyl benzene. Benzene is the uh, primary basic raw material to get the ethyl benzene that must be very dry enough. So, getting dry raw materials in alkylation reaction is one step to be uh, taken care. Then minimization of uh, loss of uh, aromatic compounds in polyalkyl benzenes by high temperature dealkylation. When you do the high temperature dealkylation of uh, polyalkyl benzenes, so some of the aromatics may be lost. So, that loss should be minimized. Then reducing losses of aluminum chloride catalyst by extracting residues from high temperature uh, dealkylator is also essential. Prevention of undue polymerization of styrene, if you do not control the temperature, styrene polymerization may take place at high temperature. So, prevention of undue polymerization of styrene during purification is accomplished by inhibitor plus refrigeration that is the reason we are storing at a, uh, 10 degree centigrade or less temperature. Control of dehydrogenation reaction by use of a large mole ratio of superheated steam to ethyl benzene is essential and it accomplishes the following reduces partial pressure of reacting components which is good and improves the equilibrium conversion. Supplies endothermic heat of the reaction then avoids undesirable side reactions, controls the temperature of reaction and minimizes coking of a catalyst and then finally removes carbon deposits by water gas reaction. So, this is all about the production of styrene from a 
uh, ethyl benzene and then ethyl benzene is used and intermediate whereas the primary raw material were benzene and then ethylene. Okay? Economics of styrene, continued growth in polymer market is assured because polystyrene resins are uh, economic, cheap, it furnishes good fabrication and uh, wear characteristics. Synthetic rubber made with uh, styrene butadiene copolymer that is SBR is not advancing markedly in sales. This is because of competition from other recently developed elastomers. However, overall marketing picture for the styrene is quite favorable. Now we discuss about talic anhydride which is having the chemical structure sh as shown here. Pertinent properties of uh, this compound provided here, molecular weight 148.1 melting point 130.6 degrees centigrade, boiling point 284.5 degrees centigrade, density at 4 degrees centigrade is 1.53 gram per cc, it is a very dense material. Ignition temperature is 588 degrees centigrade, solubility, it is slightly soluble in hot water and ether, sublimes below the melting point. Grades, technical grades having 99 to 99.8% whereas the pure more than 99.8% is also one of the grade. It can be uh, produced in flakes or pellets forms as well. Consumption pattern primarily used in alkyd resins and plasticizers productions only. Now we discussed the production of uh, talic anhydride using the naphthalene raw material that is if you do the oxidation of uh, naphthalene then you can get the thalic anhydride or if you do the oxidation of uh, ortho xylene then also you can get the thalic anhydride or you take the mixture of these two and do the oxidation of the mixture then also you get the thalic anhydride. So accordingly reactions separately we take. Chemical reactions naphthalene oxidation. So here this naphthalene that is C10H8 reacts with oxygen or air in the presence of V2O5 catalyst at 400 degrees centigrade to produce thalic anhydride along with that one you get uh, you also get carbon dioxide and then water vapors and then reaction is highly exothermic reaction. If you use ortho xylene as a reactant and do the oxidation, then xylene, ortho xylene reacting with oxygen in the presence of same V2O5 catalyst but slightly higher temperature 480 to 600 degrees centigrade will also give you uh, thalic anhydride and water vapor. In this case, there is no CO2 formation at all. There are some side reactions also there. If you do not control the temperature, complete combustion takes place that is major side reaction where C10H8 that is naphthalene reacting with 12O2 giving rise to 10CO2 and 4H2O. Otherwise, you know uh, orthoxylene reacting with uh, 10 1 by 2 oxygen to give 8CO2 and then 5H2O. Minor side reactions uh, are possible where this uh, naphthalene reacts with oxygen to give malic anhydride which we are going to discuss its production in the subsequent section of the particular lecture. This reaction also produces CO2 and H2O. If you have a you know orthoxylene it also undergo, undergoes oxidation and then produces malic anhydride along with CO2 and H2O. See now uh, you cannot control the exactly uh, theoretical requirement of uh, uh, naphthalene and air or uh, xylene and air mixture so that you get only thalic anhydride. You also get the impurities like malic anhydride, CO2, H2, etc. would also be formed in the uh, reactor and then subsequent separation of impurities is becoming essential uh, from the product purity point of view. All reactions are much more endothermic than principal reaction and a high degree temperature control is essential to optimize yields. Quantitative requirements, 1 ton of thalic anhydride 75 percent yield, if you are using naphthalene then 1.15 tons and then A 22.6 tons required. If you are using orthoxylene then 0 0.96 tons required, A 20.1 tons required. So, requirement of the you know uh, raw materials is slightly less if you are using xylene com 
in comparison with naphthalene and air. Plant capacity is 15 to 150 tons per day. This is the flow chart provided here. So, whether you take naphthalene or orthoxylene or mixture of it, what you have to do? You have to preheat and then uh, melt it and then that melted uh, mixture of the reactants or individual reactants are fed to a reactor. This reactor can be fluid bed or packed bed, anything it can be. So, if it is a packed bed actually you have a tubular columns as we have already uh, discussed in some of the other uh, production methods, tubular packed columns. So, those tubular columns are packed with the catalyst of V2O5 and then to, through those uh, tubes the uh, air and an naphthalene mixture is being passed so that the oxidation takes place to get the product mixture, right. Now, here in this case if you are using fluidized bed, so this melted uh, reactants are further uh, vaporized by bubbling with uh, preheated air. So, this air is preheated and then supplied to the bottom of the fluid bed and then that preheated air uh, makes the vaporization of the melted raw materials and then this air quantity is supplied such a way that required uh, 22 kg of air per uh, you know kg of the naphthalene whatever requirement is there that accordingly such flow rates are uh, provided here. And in this uh, fluid as bed reactor now the reaction takes place and then you get the uh, thalic anhydride along with the malic anhydride and other impurities. So, then reaction mixture is passed through cyclone and then uh, precipitator to collect the dust etc. if at all present in the mixture and then this product mixture is passed through a uh, waste uh, heat boiler to recover some of the energy from the product streams in the form of steam and then still the product streams are if hot enough they would be passed through a preheater used for uh, preheating the air so that the some of the heat of the product stream is passed to the air so that that air is, can be preheated and sent to the fluid bed reactors so that the heat economy can be managed. Then the temperature of the uh, product stream reduces further and then that is passed through a separator to separate out the uh, tar and then product stream is taken to subsequent steps of you know vacuum distillation and then condensation in fluided bed condenser etc. to separate out the uh, impurities and then get the thalic anhydride as a products in the form of pellets or they would be remelted and flaked as well as per the requirement form. Okay. The separation different types of separations are there all those things we discuss in the uh, process description anyway. Process description feed raw materials naphthalene, orthoxylene or mixture thereof are melted then vaporized by bubbling primary preheated air through the molten uh, material. Secondary air to make up 22 kg of air per kg of feed requirement is added downstream and reacting mixture is passed through a preheater to a fixed bed converter. You can also have the fluid bed converter. This fixed bed reactor if you are using it is a multi tubular catalytic reactor filled with supported V2O5 catalyst. Exothermic heat of reaction is removed from outside of the tubes by a molten salt circulating uh, system that is not shown in the flow chart, but such kind of a uh, tubular packed bed reactors with uh, provision to uh, cooling the tubes or reactants you know or the product mixture such kind of provisions we have already seen in some in the production of uh, some other uh, chemicals several times in fact we have seen in last couple of chapters. Oxidation conditions in the reactor is approximately 380 to 450 degrees centigrade and 0.1 to 0.4 seconds of contact time. Remember all these conditions are for the you know packed bed reactor if you are using packed or fixed bed reactor. Reactor effluent gases are passed through a waste heat steam boiler and tends to a preheater. In the preheater final temperature is dropped to a few degrees above the dew point of thalic anhydride. Condensation of solid products can be affected by pairs of switching fin tube condensers or cyclones or fluidized bed condensers or water scrubbers. Any of them can be used or all of them may be used in general. 
crude solid product is then melted, vacuum distilled and condensed with a flaking or pelletizing operation to complete the production of a dry pellets of a uh, thalic anhydride or flakes of a thalic anhydride. Major impurity is malic anhydride in 0.2 to 0.4% quantities only. This uh, malic anhydride and fumaric acid uh, should be recovered. The production of these two we are discussing after completion of this particular thalic anhydride topic. This recovery is done by using off gas uh, scrubbing liquor of crude thalic anhydride condensers. Process modifications and alternatives as already mentioned in place of a uh, fixed bed reactors, we can also have fluid bed reactors as well. Okay? So, let us say if you use the fluid bed reactors, then conditions at the head end are somewhat different. Molten naphthalene and or orthoxylene is sprayed directly into the air fluidized catalytic reactor which operates at 600 degree centigrade, slightly higher temperature than the case of packed bed reactors. Reacted gases arise upwards through the dense phase into a wider calming settling zone and thence through internal cyclone to dust filters by you know uh, precipitators. Condensation is same as above fixed bed reactor case, but no vacuum distillation is required to get the pellets of uh, you know thalic anhydride. Comparison of uh, process conditions, fluid bed catalytic process operates at 142 220 degree centigrade higher than the packed bed reactor and a longer contact time of 10 seconds. However, it requires lower air that is 15 kg of air per kg of the feed. This is one advantage, this is some disadvantage. Okay? So, but however, though the yields are uh, equivalent in either of the processes, but if you use the fluid bed catalytic process, no malic acid is produced thus giving a very high purity thalic anhydride product. If you wanted to have high purity thalic anhydride, it is better to go for the fluid bed catalytic converter, right? Though the temperature is slightly higher and then contact time is also slightly higher, okay? This is about the thalic anhydride production. Now we discuss uh, major engineering problems associated with this process. Explosion hazards are important ones to be taken care. They can be minimized by adding excess air to stay below the lower explosive limits and then fixed bed tubular reactor design. Tube design and heat transfer must be considered to avoid too high a center temperature within each catalytic tube if you are using fixed bed uh, tubular reactor. Process alternatives, fixed bed versus fluid bed uh, are the options. However, fluid bed requires some more development to get into more competitive position though it is uh, stands very good now itself. Catalyst development for high specificity of oxidations are required. Choice of coolant for fixed bed uh, converters are also essential to discuss where mercury and diphenyls are also used as a coolant for fixed bed. Now, we discuss uh, production of uh, malic anhydride. Its structure is given by th this one, right? That is C4H2O3, C4H2O3. Pertinent properties, molecular weight 98.1, melting point 53.3 degree centigrade, boiling point 199.7 degree centigrade. Density at 20 degree centigrade is 0 0.934. Ignition temperature is 475 degree centigrade. Solubility, it is soluble in water, acetone, ether, chloroform and petroleum. Grades, commercial grades having more than 99 percent purity are there. They would be in flakes forms, pellets forms or solidified within the containers as well. Consumption pattern, primarily it is used for the polyesters production. To some extent also used into the alkyd resin formulation, but not to the larger extent that the thalic anhydride has been used or that means it is used lesser extent because thalic anhydride is primarily used only for the alkyd resins, whereas uh, malic anhydride is used only to lesser extent to, pro, uh, to produce alkyd resins. Minor amount of it is also used in agricultural chemicals such as malathion and soil conditioners. Now, we discuss production of malic anhydride by oxidation of benzene. 
or N-butene. Either of them you can take do the oxidation to get the malic anhydride. So, we see chemical reactions if you take the benzene and do the oxidation, benzene reacts with oxygen in the presence of V2O5 catalyst to get the malic anhydride and water vapor and then carbon dioxide. Butene if you take and do the oxidation then also you get the malic anhydride and water vapor. Both of these reactions are uh, highly exothermic. Quantitative requirements basis for benzene oxidation process if you are taking benzene as raw material and then to produce 1 ton of malic anhydride at 60 percent yield you required 1.33 tons of uh, benzene and 22 22 tons of uh, air whereas if you use butene and do the oxidation to get uh, malic anhydride to get 1 ton of malic anhydride at 50 percent yield you require 1.07 tons of uh, butene and then 38 to 40 tons of air. Plant capacity is, is very low 8 to 30 tons per day in general. This is the flow chart here. So, what we have the benzene whatever is there that you pass through a vaporizer and then vaporize it and then you can mix with butene which is optional if you wanted to use both of them. Otherwise, the vaporized benzene is uh, you know mixed with the air right if you are using benzene only then it is mixed with air if you, if you are using butene only then vaporizer is not required and then you can mix this butene with the air and then preheat them and then send it to the tubular catalytic bed reactor right you can use both of them as well which is optional anyway Right. So, the reactant uh, mixture whatever is there that is passed through a preheater then to the bottom of a tubular reactor in which you have n number of tubes. Right. So, these tubes are uh, filled with V2O5 catalyst and through these catalytic tubes or tubes filled with catalyst you know when this uh, reactant mixture passes through oxidation of uh, uh, benzene or butene will take place and then you get the thalic anhydride along with the uh, impurities like CO2 and H2 etc. In order to control the temperature of the reaction, you know fused salt is circulated to the shell side of the reactor to control the temperature. The product stream coming out of the tubular bed uh, uh, reactor would be having high, higher temperature. So, that would be passed through waste. Uh, uh, steam boiler in in order to recover the energy in the form of steam and then still if the product mixture is at higher temperatures that would be passed through a feed preheater so that to transfer some of the energy of the product streams to the feed so that the required uh, preheating of the feed can also be taken place. This is very essential from the heat economy point of view. Then the material is uh, passed through a condense, condenser cooled to separate out the tar. After separating out the tar, whatever the product mixture is there that is sent to a scrubber to scrub out the vent gases, right? And then from here, whatever the product that you get, you get 40 percent malic acid solution, okay? This solution you can uh, take to the uh, dehydrator where you remove water, and then after the dehydration the product mixture subsequently is taken to the vacuum refining to further purify the product and then product is chilled low temperature uh, to collect malic anhydride products. Whereas, the uh, portion of uh, a product mixture from the scrubber is taken to the uh, is taken for the isomerization to produce the malic acid. So, that product is uh, purified and then isomerized using the acid followed by the centrifugation and drying leads to the production of fumaric acid as well. This is taken as a co-product. Okay? Coming to the process description, this oxidation process is very similar to fixed bed catalytic process to produce thalic anhydride we, which we just discussed. Benzene is vaporized with a large excess of air at 1 to 1 1.5 atmospheric gauge pressure. So, if you want to have the atmospheric pressure, one should be added to this one that is 2 to 2.5 atmospheric pressure. In a steam coil to avoid explosive composition, 
After preheating, it is fed to a fixed bed converter where the contact time is approximately 0.1 seconds, temperature is 400 to 500 degree centigrade and pressure is 0.8 to 1 atmospheric gauge or 1.8 to 2 atmospheric pressure. Exit gases from reactor are passed successively through waste heat boiler, feed preheater, tar knockout drum and absorbed in water to yield a 40 percent malic acid uh, solution. This is reconverted to anhydride by a hydrocarbon azeotropic distillation system. Crude product is purified by vacuum distillation. Coming to the major engineering problems of the process, hydrocarbon feed alternative when cheaper butene was introduced a V2O5 or P2O5 on alumina supported catalyst had to be developed. Choice of condensation method is also one issue. In addition to water scrubbing or water absorption dehydration system given in the flow chart, a partial condenser maintains slightly above melting point of malic anhydride followed by final absorption in either aqueous or non-aqueous solvent is used for the recovery. Fumaric acid production is also important uh, as, as it is gaining the market based on increased demand of this isomer of uh, malic acid. It was relatively simple matter to top off a side stream from water absorption column and isomerize with acid. Hydrocarbon is a typical acid as discussed in the flow chart. Choice of reactor in contrast to thalic anhydride production only a short contact time fixed bed converter will give satisfactory high yield. In the case of thalic anhydride production we have seen that either you use the fixed bed or fluid bed yields are equivalent only the temperature and then contact times are higher in the fluid bed though the less oxygen uh, requirement is there and high purity of thalic anhydride you are producing. So, those are the things associated with the comparison of a fixed bed versus fluid bed reactors for the thalic anhydride. But however, in the case of malic anhydride it has been found that fixed bed converter with short contact times are providing higher yield. B this is because inherently higher fluid bed contact time gives rise more complete oxidation to CO2 and H2O rather forming malic anhydride. Okay? So, that is the reason in the case of malic anhydride production it is better to go for the fixed bed uh, tubular catalytic reactors rather fluid bed catalytic converters. So, this is all about the production of uh, malic anhydride. The references for today's lecture are provided here. Thank you.